Good morning folks Unlucky for some, day number 13 on the Cape Raft Trail Okay, so the first stage today is winding around this peninsula to Glen Dubuffy which is roughly about 7 kilometers. That's obviously too soon to call it quits for today, so we'll be pushing on to head around towards Arkell and is it Lockstack? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we'll make Reconic tonight, but we'll try and get as close as possible because that'll leave us in a nice position to reach Sandwood Bay tomorrow. Oh, dearie me. Straight out of the traps and you're given this steep climb to get up and around this peninsula. Whew. I've only been going 20 minutes and that's nearly 100 metres of ascent already. I have literally just took off my waterproofs and check out this incoming. It's coming right over Cunyag right now. Yep, as predicted, right on cue. I reckon there'll be snow on that higher up. Rightio, that uh, shower has been and gone. I'm just looking out to the Atlantic here. And there's another front quite a while away, so I think I'm safe to take the waterproofs off. If I pan around to Cunyag, you can see that's definitely got a fresh dusting just in the last 20 minutes. Now this is nice, I like little sections like this through rock and tree Some impressive rock fall here Look at the size of that bad boy there And just teasing us across the water is the boffy And we've still got to get around there Boom Alright mate, you doing the Cape Wrath? Aye. It's tough eh? Piece of piss. Piece of piss. <laughs> that was a good wee lunch stop at the Buffy. It was um, pretty much on the nose from Buffy to Buffy, 7 kilometers. So if you got to Glen Cool and you're thinking of pushing on, it is bang on. What I would say though, that path with tired legs it's a bit slippy in places so yeah, it's up to yourself I suppose I was glad that we stopped last night Right, if you are heading to Kailskew or Kailstrom for uh, provisions you keep continuing on along here we on the other hand don't so we've cut an angle across here and then we're going to start heading slowly north again. Happy days. Right, we're at the point where we would turn off and head up Ben Drevy because of this really cold wind chill. We're going to continue on down to Akfari and take a more low level route. So, when you see this little ruin behind me, that would be normally your turn off opposite that where we're pushing on down. So, we've got Ben Stack here on my left. Straight ahead is uh, Arkel and another bloody rain shower. Okay, okay. We are uh, at the roadside now. Got about a kilometre and a half, and then we turn off to a little place called Lone, and that's another three kilometres or so to there, and then another four kilometres, and we meet up with the sort of original route. Uh, 20 kilometres on the clock. 
So don't know where we're going to pitch tonight. Don't rely on that phone box for a phone call. <laughs> Alright folks, change of plans since I last spoke. We're just going to push on and do some tarmac bashing to Lockstack Lodge. And then from there we meet up with the original route. I don't think there's much distance in it. Just saves a wee bit of bog, bog trotting. Eh, bog trotting? Bog trotting. Thankfully this road is really quiet. Doesn't get the NC500 madness. So we've seen about... Whoo, Six cars in the last three kilometres. We've got about another two and a bit to go. Okay, so we are at um, what's this place called again? I've forgotten. I said it down the road there. Oh, yeah. It's getting on a bit. Lock stack lodge or something like that. I'll put the name on the screen, it's totally it escaped me. I shall start that again, that was shockingly bad. Right, yo folks, we've reached Lock Stack Lodge. Can be a bit of a tongue twist to that, especially this time of day. Anyway, first pitch we see we're taking it because uh, we've got like how many kilometres, Ian? Oh, I think we're about 27 now. Yeah, 26, 27 kilometres. Both of us are knackered, so Plan. I think we need to get past this building first though. So there's the lodge there. We go the opposite direction on this path here. Right, there better be some camping spots up and around this corner at the lock. Because I tell you what, I'm back in type 2 fun zone again. I was here last night and I'm back again. I'll try not being too grumpy, but uh, I. It's uh, just so, so close now. All my gear's going up for sale on eBay when I'm finished this. So uh, keep your eye out for some bargains. Tap tent notch, much cheapness. Sleeping bags, much cheapness. <laughs> it's just, I've had enough of the outdoors now. Well, there's Hee Haw Jack McGraw there. So it looks like we are pushing on. The only savings grace is the more distance we're doing this track than now is obviously less tomorrow. Right, this is us for the night. Nice and springy, it's dry. Yep, that'll do. Home sweet home. See that there folks, that is a tick. I've already pinged it off and I'm assuming it's the same one. I'm going to ping it off again. Not shite. Alrighty, apart from that tick, I am now in my happy place. All pitched up. Uh, just to get the dinner on. Tomorrow is technically the penultimate day. We all got about 14, was it 14 or 11 and a half kilometres Ian? 14 kilometres to Reconic. 14 miles to... Uh, kilometres to the Conic and then how many to Sandwood uh, it's another 14 I think 14 so a 20 another big biggest day tomorrow but um, it sets up up nicely for the the last um, pull to the Cape itself so I um, quite excited actually it's, it's in our grasp Good morning campers, it is day 14 on the Cape Raft Trail, it is also our penultimate hike as well, so that is good. This morning's entertainment has been watching a tick crawl up my fly sheet, uh, thankfully it's on the outside, not on the inside. And um, if you happen to be in Glendu Boffy, Ian has left his waterproof jacket and it's pretty rainy today, so it's a bit of a boo-boo. But it's a red Paramo smock, so if you're in there and you see it, it belongs to Mr. K. All 
I'm not sure how good these are, but I've been taking these. What's that? It's the Tesco equivalent to the Barocca. Oh, yeah. And it comes at the other end, pretty much like that colour as well. No, it doesn't. Um, the Barocca doesn't, but... Oh, sorry, you mean with the piss? Aye. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, the Barocca does, yeah, you get the radioactive piss. Good breakfast, Ian. Oh, I'm double porridge and coffee. Whoa! Indeed. Get the watch ready. So we're on this track for two kilometres before we break off of the boggy stuff. And it looks miles when you see the track wind away up and over a hill. But if this was like a row of houses and there was a Greg's at the top of the hill and you were going for your sausage roll, you wouldn't even think twice. It's just because this is like Nothing. Right, just over two kilometres on the clock and I've checked the GPS, this seems to be the bit that we shall break off the track, head across country and pick up the lock. Relief. Yeah, I can feel it under my feet. <laughs> bouncy, bouncy. <laughs> right, we're on the the shores of the first lock, and there does seem to be a bit of a faint path here, which is a Brucey bonus. I don't know if this has just been created by years of Cape Raft trailers. One lock down, another one to go over here. But I can see civilization through the gap here. This is a really boggy section, I think, coming up. Right, we're at the uh, river crossing now. This might be a bit difficult in spate. I think Ian's going to have to get his boots off if he wants to keep his feet dry. <laughs> but anyway, I just saw he went as close as possible to the mouth there. And it came just above my ankles, so if I had boots on, I would be getting wet. Right, that took exactly two hours to get to the wee ruin there. Seven kilometres as well. That's from leaving the camp this morning. Ian's just a little bit behind. He's uh, getting his kegs back on after he's dipping the river. Alrighty, that's me reached Reconic. There is not much here other than a hotel and a few houses. I could do with some hot food though. I've just been a little fat pie coming down that track, just snacking all the way. But to be fair, I don't think I'm getting enough calories in the morning and I'm playing catch up. Because I was using those Y food shakes as part of my breakfast and they were giving me like 400 calories. And I ran out of them at the halfway point and I've just noticed I've missed those 400 calories. And I've replaced them like Nutri-Grain bars and other porridge bars and they're just not quite cutting the mustard for me. So, uh... Alrighty, a lot of road walking for us now. Alright folks, we have stopped in at the old school. We've ordered some burger and chips, cannot wait. That is the business. Ah, I needed that, that was good. Really tasty, I recommend that place if you're on the trail as well. But for us, it's back on the road for another good few kilometers yet. Aha, the London stores. Let's have a wee look. 
there's not much available at London stores just some snacks and whatnot. had the cheek to buy myself an apple oh and it's and it's cash only as well so no card <clears throat> proper old school I think he's been running out of shop for probably decades alright troops unless you want supplies from Kinloch Bervet which is around to the left you actually swing a right here and go past the school seems a bit odd but our route goes around this church I think it's certainly signposted this way I'm not convinced that I missed something Or should I be up over that? Do, 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 do. Ah, there we go There's a gate Right, that's me back on tarmac again. That was a good little deviation around that lock. I also want to give a big shout out to a YouTube channel I discovered by accident called Chase Mountains. And I found one of his stretch routine videos by accident to help prevent ITBS. And I've been doing stretches every night for the last three months on the run up to this. And the stretches has made a huge difference, honestly. If you struggle a wee bit, like me, you maybe pick up niggle injuries, or I don't know, you're just a bit unsupple, then it's really worthwhile doing these stretches. And I'll put a link down to his channel because it's made a difference. And I think if I'd done this last year, I mean, if I to have bailed with a minor knee injury or something like that, and these stretches just have made a massive difference. So there's Foynevin. That's Arco, and these guys have been getting rained on all day. So glad we're out of the mountains now. Well, hello Sandwood Bay. I am back again, and this time it's much nicer. The last time I was here, it was all overcast and a bit bleak. It's amazing what the sunshine does. But it's great to be here. Yes, super boss, super boss. Good morning folks, it is day 15 on the Cape Raft Trail, it is the final day and uh, we've literally just set off. It wouldn't be the last day without a little bit of drama. Yesterday coming down to Sandwood Bay, I started getting this sort of twinge in my left shin and it just sort of progressively got worse as I got closer to Sandwood and then last night it was a bit painful and I'm starting to panic, I hope I'm not getting shin splints so ibuprofen last night, ibuprofen this morning touch wood, a night's sleep it feels okay today might flare up a little bit later on but I'm just going to take it really easy saw as well after talking about all those stretches last yeah, yesterday 
So anyway, we're just going to find a point to cross this river and then head into the Cape Braff. Don't know what to think today. It's going to be weird when we actually get there. Yeah. I've certainly enjoyed it. It's been a couple of days where it's been type 2 fun, but on the whole, collectively, over the 15 days, it's been brilliant. I've actually been really fortunate with the weather as well. The first half was pretty much sunny, apart from two overcast days, but I mean, it's been largely dry, so we can't complain there. The second half, it's been a bit wetter, it's been a bit colder. But again, it could have been a lot, lot worse. The river crossings have been fine. These can be problematic in heavy rain. So, uh, yeah. On the whole, I think we've done really well. With regards to footwear, Ian and I have kind of gone down different paths. On that matter, I've gone for the wet feet with the trail runners, the Saucony Peregrine ISOs. And, on large, I've been fine. I've been wiping my feet down with uh, antiseptic wipes at night, letting them dry out. Uh, I've had a little bit of a heat rash, but other than putting on wet socks in the morning, it's been fine. Ian, he's gone for a flexible uh, waterproof boot. What's the make you've got, Ian? Yeah, I've gone for the Lua Grindel GTX, um, and it's very lightweight. Uh, did a bit of research beforehand. And uh, a lot of the forums are saying if you go for boots, especially Gore-Tex, you're going to be basically wet feet right through. So a lot of people are saying go for trail shoes. But uh, my experience is my feet have stayed dry throughout the whole journey, uh, which I've been quite surprised about. I wasn't expecting that. And that's despite submerging them in several rivers few bogs. I mean, relatively it has been dry, but we've still had to go through a lot of moisture. Yeah. And um, so I definitely give the the uh, Loa Grindle GTX boot a thumbs up for me. Light, flexible, and definitely waterproof. So. Alright, in terms of uh, navigation, there's no paths, so we're kind of going to skirt to the left of this. The MOD range should just be down and over the other side. We've checked the website, we've phoned up, we've been given the green light, but they can be lazy for taking the red flags down apparently, so I will be a bit worried if that's the case for us. As you can see, it is pretty bleak. It's nice to hear the skylarks though. Your on the right, folks, the red flags are down. We are good to go. We have crossed the divide into the danger zone. It's well worth just keeping an eye on your footing for any unexploded shells or something because apparently it is littered with them Well, we're just having our last lunch on the Cape Raft Trail Call it the last supper if you like You can just see the peninsula we're heading out to now The lighthouse is just hidden Should be there in what, phew, about an hour, hour and a half maybe, if that Alright folks, I'm on the road to the lighthouse now, crossed all that peatland, a lot of it was dry to be fair, just the last section there a bit wet, but that's it, just a few, not even a few, two kilometres to the lighthouse, yes, so close, I can almost taste it, there it is folks, first sight of it since yesterday, you can see it from Sandwood Bay. 
so close now. So close. I'm going to greet. No again. <laughs> Shut up you. <laughs> Well folks, we've done it, we're here, cannot believe it, I feel a bit numb at the moment, it's not really sunk in, it's been a long time coming, 15 days and one rest day, I've not even added up the total mileage yet, <clears throat> that was 10 and a half kilometres, we've done today, 3.5 hours, it's a really short day, uh, aye, I don't know what to say. Blown away. Good there, mate. Well done. Good job. Superb boss. Yes. yes. <laughs>